So the 2022 NBA draft has concluded. It is time for my annual draft grades. Yeah, last night was a fun one. I hope you were able to make it out to the stream. We had over 3,000 people at one point. You saw my funny reactions to the Knicks trades. So yeah, they will not be getting a grade here because I'll be giving every team that made a selection, but I give them an F. Only because they managed to have to give up one first round pick to get off of Kemba Walker's contract or four seconds, however you look at it. Especially if it's to sign Jalen Brunson, which is a big no-no in my opinion. I mean, if you watch the stream, you know why. But yeah, I'm going to be going through all 30 picks, giving letter grades and why I think they deserve that. Great. If you guys do enjoy the draft content, feel free to drop a thumbs up. We're getting into the offseason. Draft grades are going to be here. I'll be doing a bunch of more draft content, uh, kind of ranking each team's picks and all that on the second channel too. We're getting into free agency soon. I'll be doing my first post-draft rebuild tomorrow, thinking about a uh, an already an Ivy and Jalen Duran rebuild. But if you want to see me do any other rebuilds, let me know down below. Thunder got a lot of new players. The Rockets got a lot of new players. San Antonio, Minnesota as well. And yeah, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these picks down below and let's get into it. And if you disagree with any of these grades, please let me know down below and let's get into the video. So with the number one overall pick in the draft, I have the Orlando Magic getting a B plus. Yes, the number one overall pick isn't an A. Paolo Bancaro was my fourth ranked player in this draft class, and that's why it's a B plus. He's a fantastic player. I think he can win rookie of the year. I also predicted that he's going to score the most in the rookie season out of every other rookie. I just would have went Chet Holmgren, and if not Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith Jr. That's why it gets a B plus. Chet Holmgren at number two for the OKC Thunder is actually going to be an A plus. Yeah, I was going to make it an A, but you're getting my number one player in the draft at number two. That's really good. I think he's going to have the best career out of anybody in this class, and that's why it's getting an A plus. Jabari Smith Jr. at three is going to be an A for me. We all thought he was going to be going number one overall to the Magic on the day of the draft. It goes, whoa, it's Paolo Bancaro. There's at one point where he was like plus 700 odds to go number one yesterday and he ended up going number one. But getting Jabari Smith at three, I think I actually like Jabari Smith in Houston better than Paolo Bancaro. He is my second best player in this class. You got him at three. That deserves an A. At number four, we have the Sacramento Kings selecting Keegan Murray. That is a B from me. And I love Keegan Murray, don't get me wrong. And apparently there were some reports that Jaden Ivey like, didn't really want to play for Sacramento. I just have like Ivey so much higher than Murray when it comes to talent level. And maybe he's just even thinking about trading down and acquiring more talent to try to make a playoff run next year. Could have been a better option. But either way, I'm still excited to see him and Sabonis in that front court. At number five, this is going to be another A plus for me. It is Jaden Ivey to the Detroit Pistons. And that's an A plus. Yeah, he is my third ranked player in this draft. You got him at five. And I've been salivating over it for so long. I've been mentioning in mock drafts, like the Jaden Ivey, Kate Cunningham backcourt would be just so much fun to watch. And I can't believe we're going to get it next year. Benedict Matherin to the Pacers at six is going to get a B plus. They could have gone in maybe some different options here if they like Shaden Sharp, possibly Dyson Daniels. But I really like Matherin. This was the, the selection I would have made if I were here between him and Sharp. But B plus, it's a pretty good pick. I'm excited to see Benedict in Indiana. Number seven, Shaden Sharp to the Blazers. It's actually an A minus. Now, do the Blazers need another guard? Not really. You have Simons and Dame. You could use more wings there. But this might be a top three talented player in this class. You're getting him at seven. You need to improve your bench, especially on the offensive side. So you go out and get Shaden Sharp. Dyson Daniels to the Pelicans at eight is a B plus for me. I'm only just worried about his playing time next year with Jose Alvarado, with McCollum playing some point guard here and there, and Devontae Graham. I hope he gets a lot of run. I love this player in this class. He's going to be a good scorer. Um, at the rim, we'll see how his shooting can go. He's going to be a great passer, good rebounder. I think he's going to really try on defense this year, and he can be really good for a Pelican team that desperately needs more defenders. And that's why he gets a B plus for me. Number nine, the San Antonio Spurs. They took Jeremy Shohan. This is a B. Now, I love Jeremy Shohan in the strip. He's never going to be all-star in my opinion but he's gonna be those guys maybe not like Jermon Green it's hard it's unfair to compare him to him but just like one of those like important role players on a championship team like players like Grant Williams and Marcus Smart for the Celtics this year probably never be all-stars but you need guys like that and that's what I think Sohan can be maybe just a little bit high at nine for San Antonio especially for where they are in their timeline but don't worry they'll pick later on that get better grades Johnny Davis to the Wizards at 10 that's a B plus for me because I'm just not sure what they're doing in the backcourt are they moving Beal to the point guard position are they gonna be going after a point guard in free agency I would have liked to see them maybe get a little bit aggressive and maybe moved up to get Dyson Daniels would have costed a lot uh, but yeah I'm just interested about the fit with Davis and Beal back there number 11 we had the New York Knicks they ended up trading the pick to the OKC Thunder. And I'm going to give this a B minus. Now, I do like Usman Jang. I think he projected a very good defender in this league with his size and frame. 
but it is going to take some time, but that's the perfect scenario in OKC. Nobody's rushing you. As just giving up three first round picks. Was that worth it? And Jalen Williams at 12 is going to get a B from me. Now, I do like Jalen Williams more than Zhang, at least at this current moment. But same thing. Like, I don't know if it's like they thought some team was going to take Jalen Williams or, or the Knicks or some team was going to trade up was going to take Usman Zhang. And they're like, all right, we got to give up three first round picks for one of these guys. I just thought that was a little bit steep. And that's why uh, Williams gets a B and Zhang gets a B minus. Jalen Duran going to the Detroit Pistons at 13. This was originally the Hornets pick. This is going to be an A. Yeah, I love Jalen Duran. It's a weird fit in Detroit with him and Isaiah Stewart. I don't know who's going to be the long-term five. I'd assume it's going to be Jalen Duran, but those pick and rolls with Duran, Cade, and Ivy are just going to be so much fun to watch. They're going to be like a top league pass team next year. At 14, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers taking Oshie Baji. It's an A-minus for me. This is the guy I wanted them to take. They needed a ready NBA score to come off the bench, and O'Shea's their guy. 15, we have the Charlotte Hornets taking Mark Williams. This is a B plus. I love Mark Williams in this draft. I just thought it was interesting to see them trade away pick 13 for like a future Denver first round pick and you get a bunch of seconds um, and taking, I guess, or choosing Mark Williams over Jalen Duran. I don't know if I would do that, but either way, I'm happy Charlotte ended up going with a big. Atlanta at 16 taking AJ Griffin. This is an A minus for me. I thought he was going to go in the top 10 at some point. I mocked him 11 to the Knicks. Surprised he didn't go in the lottery. Steal for the Hawks at 16. We have another A pick here and that's Tari Eason to the Rockets at 17. I just love Tari Eason. I think that 17 is incredible value. We'll see what they do kind of in that front court because they have Jabari Smith Jr. now. They have Alperu and Shangu and they also have Usman Garuba. Like we'll see where Jay Sean Tate's going to be playing. Now Easton, but I, I love Easton either way. 18, we have the Chicago Bulls taking Dale and Terry. It's a B. I like Terry a lot. I think there were some other players on the board that I would have preferred in Chicago. And if Terry Easton went the pick prior, who I would have loved there, Maybe just trade up a little bit. That would have been nice to see Eason in Chicago. Jay Oravia to the Timberwolves at 19. This is a C plus. I like Oravia, and I thought he was going to be a late first round pick, but giving up like 22 and 29 to go up and get Loravia for Memphis was a little interesting. At 20, we have the San Antonio Spurs taking Malachi Branham. This is an A plus. Yes, I think Branham could have been like a sneaky lottery pick. He obviously didn't go there. And I mentioned this before. If there was a, like a Donovan Mitchell from 2017 in this year's class, It'd be Malachi Brandon. Christian Brown going to the Nuggets at 21 is a B plus for me. He played super well in the tournament, was one of the draft's biggest risers, and I'm excited to see him in Denver. There were some other players I would prefer with that team, but I like seeing Brown go there. It also treated us to something else, if you know what I mean. At 22, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves taking Walker Kessler. This is a C plus. Uh, I don't really know what they're doing with Nas Reed now. Like obviously at the power forward spots, you got Jared Vanderbilt and Jaden McDaniels. I just didn't know if they should go for another kind of backup center option. Maybe Nas Reed isn't on the team next year. We'll see. At 23, we have the Memphis Grizzlies trading DeAnthony Melton to the 76ers. Love that trade for Philly, by the way. For David Roddy out of Colorado State, this is a C minus. This is somebody that I thought they could have just kind of 29 originally and kept DeAnthony Melton, who's a good bench player for you. At 24, we have the Milwaukee Bucks taking Marjan Beauchamp. This is a B. Uh, he's a little raw as a prospect, but he's older in age, though. I just feel like Milwaukee had to hit on this pick as a bench scorer, but I like Bo Champ over some other guys that they could have taken here. Blake Wesley to the Spurs at 25. This is an A. Blake Wesley is one of my favorite players in this class, and getting him at 25 along with Malachi Brandon before, I just love that from the Spurs. It's funny because I love their picks at 20 and 25 more than I like the pick at 9. Wendell Moore at pick 26. This is technically going to Minnesota. I'm going to be giving this a B. Wendell Moore is like a couple of these other guys, like Christian Brown, like O'Shea Baji. He's NBA ready. And maybe he can eat at those Malik Beasley minutes next year. Nikola Jovic going to the Miami Heat at 27. Now, I like Jovic as a prospect, but to Miami, I'm giving this a B minus. I'm just kind of intrigued on how he's going to fit their style of play. I would have preferred maybe a wing scorer off the bench, like uh, looking at possibly a Jaden Hardy or who I mocked, Bryce McGowan. At 28, with the Golden State Warriors taking Patrick Baldwin Jr., I'm giving this a B. Now, I don't really love Baldwin at all because he played really bad in Milwaukee last year. He's really drafted based on his potential. And Golden State was a weird fit because are they really going to develop him um, at the NBA level or is he going to be a big G League player next year? We'll see. Yeah, that's why it's getting that great for me. Ty Ty Washington technically going to the Rockets at 29. This is an A-. minus. I love Ty Ty in the strip. I thought he could have been a sneaky lottery pick and they got him at 29. Big fan of that. And at 30, we have the Denver Nuggets selecting Peyton Watson out of UCLA. 
This is gonna get one of my worst grades. It's gonna be a D plus. Uh, if you look up Peyton Watson's stats last year, they weren't great. I really thought he should have stayed another year at UCLA because he didn't get a lot of run last year. But hey, he must have killed the combine. He must have killed the workout with the Nuggets. I just thought it was not a great pick. So yeah, that is me grading every first round pick. There was a lot of good talent and I liked a lot of these picks. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like if you did. Let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me down below. I'll have my first post draft rebuild out tomorrow. Love you guys. I'll see y'all then. Peace.